Oh. No. Hello. What are you up to, Kyla? I am checking some of our wetlands. Um, we have a bunch of these staff gauges around at different wetlands, as well as some actual PVC wells that go down into the down to the ground where water sits. Um, and so that's what this is for, and we'll show you that in a minute. But these ones are staff gauges. They're basically big rulers that are um, set at a certain depth, and we're just marking where standing water um, hits or sediment if it's dry. Um, and right now, this one is hitting at 18.5 centimeters, um, but then again, some of that is buried in the ground. 18.5 minus how far it's buried into the ground, and that's how much water is sitting on the surface. This is all wetland one. You see these brush packs here. Uh, basically just kind of slowing water down, pooling them a little bit, um, and slowing down runoff. standing water here so I'm just gonna note the level of the sediment and this uh, longest bar here is 20 centimeters then it goes 19 18 17 16 15 so I'm gonna call that 15 centimeters um, for the sediment level and then over here this is called a piezometer um, and it's basically a PVC pipe that goes down into the ground super important to have the cap on because if you have it off and it rains then you're you're not really getting accurate like well data that's just like adding water to the level, uh, the level down there um this is a water level indicator it's electronic so it'll make this noise when it hits water with this little sensor and so i have it at a certain sensitivity level of six it's probably irrelevant to you guys but I'm going to drop it in as straight as I can until I hear that beep. And then you see there's these markings on the side. These are in tenths of a foot. Um, so there's two, two feet, and then it goes 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and so on, and then three. So you want to see where it hits. So I'm going to call that... 2 feet, 0.65. So 2.65 feet is the depth until we hit water. And again, we know how far these were buried into the ground and we do a little equation to see how much water is actually in there. Mitigation and compliance monitoring are important to help prevent further loss of sensitive habitats, such as sensitive coastal prairies and wetlands that we have here at Younger Lagoon. Compliance monitoring is essentially an annual review of the plant community at a restoration project and whether or not it's on track or has already met its project objectives. Compliance monitoring is often requi is required for any mitigatory restoration projects or those required by law, and it's often mandated by government agencies. At Younger Lagoon, we're mandated by the California Coastal Commission to conduct compliance monitoring for several grassland, coastal sage scrub, and wetland sites, such as the one behind me right here. At Younger Lagoon, we were required to conduct these mitigatory restoration projects in order to mitigate for the construction of the Coastal Science Campus. Mitigatory projects generally have compliance goals that are numeric and time-bound. At Younger Lagoon, for example, our, our objectives are 25% native cover and six species richness after six years. These goals are based off of native cover values and species richness values from remnant from nearby remnant ecosystems. In order to conduct compliance monitoring, we first need a transect, a quadrat, and need to be able to identify local plants. We start by laying out a transect at a permanently marked location, and then we take our quadrat and we place it at select locations along the transect. We then visually assess the percent cover of different plant species in each quadrat. If you're unable to identify specific plant species, you may need to refer to your local plant key. In California, you may refer to something like the Jepson key. If a project reaches compliance goals after six years, 
then it would be considered successful and no further action is needed. If a project does not reach its compliance goals after six years, further restoration activities are taken on that site and then they are monitored each subsequent year until it does. Part of our monitoring efforts every year include photo monitoring, and that's basically taking photos at specific points around the reserve in all directions, and that way we can monitor the, how the landscape is changing. Um, so in the last few years, we got to see all the paths change and new buildings being built, but also every year we get to see sections of the reserve um, that we've restored, and so we're just watching how the plants change um, over time. And I'm going to show you this. I have this iPad at, on ArcGIS, and there's a bunch of different GPS points and the photos from last year. Um, and so I'm going to try to mimic that exact same shot in all of those directions. Um, and so we can have the same photo of the same exact location um, year after year. All right, so if I wanted, if I'm right here on this path, I can see all the photos that were taken here. Um, I already did this section this year, so there's double of everything, but I'm just going to show you for an example. Um, if I want to face north, this is the photo I'm trying to recreate. So I use um, different things as visual um, cues. So I have this building here to look off, that tree, um, and then this clump of trees in those apartments. And so then I can look at the landscape and try to make that same exact photo. And I would take it like right here.